as you probably gathered, uh, I don't have any uh, religious leanings, but simply because uh, God doesn't, may not exist, let's, let's phrase it uh, uh, diplomatically, doesn't mean to say that we can't uh, aim to build an approximation of heaven. Today the, the roots of heaven and hell lie deep within the limbic system and these, uh, crudely the pleasure centres for instance, uh, you get projections into the, uh, the neocortex. Uh, and once we understand the basis of hedonic tone uh, and how to arbitrarily uh, enrich or diminish it, then it's possible to paint, crudely speaking, any radically alien state space we explore uh, with a positive hedonic failure. It just guarantees that however strange, outlandish, uh, uh, the, the nature of the experience uh, we, uh, that, that is disclosed, it will be uh, sublime. Uh, whereas uh, today, unfortunately, given the nature of psychedelics, that unless you make sure you take uh, a euphoriant, uh, there is always the possibility of a bad trip. If it is possible, as, as, as seems uh, likely, we can use genetic engineering to calibrate the level of, of, of subjective well-being. We can recalibrate uh, uh, our set points so that they are far more exalted than was the case in the ancestral environment of adaptation uh, back on the African savanna. It's right, worth asking why do these extraordinarily nasty states such as depression, jealousy, anxiety, uh, exist essentially because they helped our genes need more copies of themselves in the ancestral environment. I can't really see any any uh, any sense in retaining even the functional analogue of something like jealousy. I mean why uh, uh, what possible useful purpose does jealousy serve other than uh, its tendency to promote the inclusive fitness of our genes. So rather than living in a stagnant society in which people don't want to do anything, other things being equal, a society in which people are naturally super happy, they will frequently want to, to seek out new uh, and variegated stimuli and this makes getting stuck in a rut less likely for the individual uh, and also for civilization as a whole. Other things being equal. If we were to uh, phase out the molecular substrates of experience below hedonic zero, it will be possible to explore radically altered states of consciousness, radically alien mind spaces. Today, I think it is probably irresponsible to urge anyone to take major psychedelics because of the risk of bad trips. But if we do phase out suffering, instead of this being a recipe for intellectual stagnation, it will be possible to explore modes of consciousness that uh, today are simply physiologically inaccessible, uh, certainly in any uh, normal state of mind. By far our most profound form of cognitive deficit is uh, our lack of access to radically altered states of consciousness as different is as, let's say, waking and, and dreaming consciousness. Uh, and uh, if one is drug naive, one has simply no notion really of what these radically altered states uh, are like.
having the raw experiences and relevant semantic uh, primitives is, is critical. And I suspect post-humans are going to be hyper-rational in uh, uh, sense, uh, on the basis of sense modalities and experience modalities that haven't even been invented today. Um, so I think it's important both to enrich our capacity, our, our serial depth of, of thought, but also to expand our range of experiences uh, so that we can have uh, a conceptual scheme that extends way beyond, in terms of raw experience, anything that's accessible today. If one looks at the historical track record of attempts at utopia, time and again things can go horribly, horribly wrong and therefore if one does take seriously the idea that we have got this ethical obligation to phase out suffering, then the actual meaning of what it is to go wrong changes. But whereas in the case of environmental utopias, social utopias, uh, in the past, if they have failed, they've frequently ended, ended up causing more suffering. If we do actually change our biological architecture, then we can, in principle, make uh, uh, suffering impossible. So, although one can have the, the functional analogues of things going wrong, they won't go wrong in the same way as they did before. Um, Nonetheless, there are other possible options to consider. One is that we would uh, find ourselves trapped in a very suboptimal uh, utopia, uh, perhaps the functional equivalent of, of wireheading, uh, and as a result of getting trapped in this local minimum, we didn't go on to explore perhaps some of the richest states of, of consciousness or the most sublime states of well-being uh, that would uh, be feasible after a lot of work. There is a danger of, uh, of prematurely foreclosing opportunities and responsibilities before we understand the responsibilities of, of what we're doing.